doing now is I'm pulling some points I'm using as handles um, to create this little teapot. And I'm just straightening those out. Um, the rotation I'm using is a very old style of rotation and the way I'm working is a very old way of working. Um, some people will seal tubes onto the glass instead of using points and that's also a uh, perfectly good way to, to work. Um, but I'm just straightening those out so that I, you know, I'm starting with something straight. Um, if you start with something crooked, it's going to be crooked. There's no way around it. Um, so this is a little tall bench for me, so I'm going to stand up while I work. And since I don't really have enough pressure for what I'm working on, um, you know, I would normally have a bigger, bushier flame for this. Now I'm going to be taking off my mask now. And we'll be blowing into this point here. When I rotate, I have one hand under and one hand over. I'm rotating away from me as if I'm a lathe. And I'm trying to heat up this section of tubing with the power I have. The man who trained me, Lloyd Moore, at the University of Nebraska, he always told me it's never the torch's fault. It's always the glassblower's fault if you don't have enough power. So as I rotate, I'm pressing together just ever so slightly. I don't want to um, thin the walls too much. But for a teapot, I do want the walls fairly thin so that it doesn't crack if you put it on the stove. So you can see I'm gathering the glass just slightly. Um, this is medium wall, one and one quarter inch. We'll just show, slowly shape this to, to the shape we want for a teapot. And um, I think since I don't have much gas power here, instead of making it a big round teapot, we're going to make it kind of a long teapot. And then it will tip over easier and people will want you to make a new one faster. You see how I can just slowly shape this. So we're working with a half pound pressure of gas and about 10 pounds pressure of oxygen. So I think that's a good diameter for the the base. We're just going to taper this top a little bit more. And when I taper, I start where I want it to it will be open on this side, and I work towards the larger area. And the glass will evenly taper for me, so I start again at the smaller area. I'm really kind of heating all of it um, so I don't get any lines. So there I'm going to give it a little extra tug. And our teapot will sit kind of like this. And this will be the top right here. Actually, why don't I just take off the top right now? So here I'm going to use a really tight oxidizing flame and I'm going to do a fire cut right here at the top. I'm trying to think of which way I want to do this. I think I'll wait for that. So I'll just warm that area back up. You can do this different ways. You could put all the additions on first and then do the fire cut or you could do the fire cut first. But I think it will be easier for you to put all the additions on first. So we'll set that to the side. And um, now out of this length, we'll, we'll make a little spout and a lid. So I'll 
I'll break this up into two different sections, one section for the lid, one section for the spout. And we won't have it this large diameter. So again, I'm pulling a point. I'm heating a wide area with a wide flame, pushing together slightly. We want the heat to get onto the interior of the tube as well as the exterior of the tube. So hold it there as long as you can. Once you get your rotation, you'll be able to do anything with glass. It's all in the rotation. So I'm gonna pull that a little extra long so that I can break it in two. I like to use points because they're light. It gives me a little less weight for my hands. That's supposed to break. <laughs> there we go. You can fire polish that lightly if you feel like it. But um, we can make a smaller tube with this large tube for the scalp. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just kind of shrink it down. This will give it a little extra weight and a little less looking like a tube. So again, I'm tapering it just very gently until, until I get the diameter of the tube I want. Sometimes people say, oh, I can't make that. I don't have the right size tubing. Well, look at you can make your whatever size tubing you want. So with the taper, I have kind of a a wide flame and I'm working up slowly onto the piece. And I'm not thinking about pulling it all, I'm just rotating. I'll go back, start at the beginning. And this way you get a nice smooth taper. This is about what I want for the diameter of that stem. I'm going to do a little bend down at the bottom and a little bend at the top. When I do a bend, I have this wide bushy flame. I'm going to heat more on these two sides here to bend. And whenever I bend, I bend up. So this, this I have both my hands under as if I'm a neon two bender. I one, two, three, and then I turn. One, two, three, I'm keeping the bottom side of that two. And I'm trying to do it evenly. Now I could bend it there, but I keep it in there a little bit longer. And I bend it up, and then I give it a little air. Blow this out just a little bit from the center. And you can see that hopefully is going to go like that. And we'll be doing that with a side seal. So then I want to bend this end over. We're just going to put a short little spout on this. So again, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's hot enough to bend, but we keep it in there a little longer. We bend up towards the heavens, turn and blow. And there we have a little spout. And I should have made a drawing before starting, but I can Sorry. That was good. Um, we want, of course, the spout to be higher than the liquid that's going to be inside. So I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to open up this other end here. And we'll take this off. There's different ways of opening up tubes of glass. One way is to just pull a thin area. And then I'm just going to break that off. And I have an opening. After I do that, 
we'll flare this out just a little bit. We want a little thickness to that. I can use a graphite rod and that won't contaminate the end. I'm doing scientific seals. Um, you want to make sure that you're not contaminating the edge before you seal it together. So here I'm just letting that thicken up a little bit and shaping it. I'll warm that out. That should go right there. Now if you notice I got a tilt on, on this, a nice little taper here. So I want to kind of tilt this opening also. To do that I'm just going to wipe it clean. I'm just going to heat this up. I'm going to take this rod is nice and cool and wipe off any excess glass that I don't want. That way I'll get a nice angle for this seal. If the rod is too hot, I'm going to be adding glass rather than subtracting glass. Keep that up, kind of mesh that in a little bit. I want this a little smaller than what I, um, oh yeah, that looks good. Okay. So we'll set that to the side. I think out of this we'll make a handle. The handle is going to be hollow, but we'll attach it with solid so that the liquid won't go into the handle. So I'm just going to take off that kind of globby stuff there. And we'll attach this. So that piece of solid that I put on there, that will attach to the, the T. A little bumpy right there, so I'm going to work that out just a little bit. Just take your time. Again, I would have a larger, bushier plane if we could get that here. So I'm just going to constrict this down so that we have a nice, thick handle to work with. bend it around. Something like that. Now I changed my mind. We're going to have this end <laughs> attached to the piece. So I'll open this up right here. Now sometimes you may want just a teeny tiny hole somewhere just to let the air out. To do that, I'm going to get a small flame Heat up just a teeny tiny area, touch it, and pull. I might have to do this a few times. And like we did before, just break that off. And I have a teeny hole there. That hopefully won't be too noticeable. I'll warm that area out, and then I'm going to seal this off here. So we'll bring this down to a solid. Now I'm going to leave that on the solid rod on the other side, but that might get in the way when I put it on. So I'm going to bend that solid rod out and just So that will be our point of attachment. Ooh, 
it looks like another basket. Okay, so whenever I'm working, I try to warm out pieces as I go. Some people put them in the oven and they pick them up. That's all right also, but I'm gonna find and straighten that out a little bit more, sorry. Just not quite centered. We'll just straighten it out. So we'll warm that out. And when I warm things out, I just kind of try to get that whole piece of glass all one temperature. And that relieves all the strain. I usually blow through the tube that I'm attaching. If that makes sense. So I'll let that cool down and then I'll be blowing through this. And then this I'll seal up. Okay, so we'll blow the hole in here. And remember we want to keep it you know, kind of that size or a little bit smaller. So I'm going to heat this up. Let it dent in a little bit. Turn it and blow. That's about the size I want. I heat just the top of that, so I'm going straight down into the flame. Blow again. Each time I'm letting this get a little taller. building up the sides of where I'm going to attach it. The last thing I'm going to do is pull, pull that open. It's really thin, and so there it just opened up. As soon as I open that, then I seal this in. And I want to thicken that edge since I had it so thin. just kind of thicken it up a little bit. It will make that seal a little bit easier if I, I have it, you know, maybe, I don't know, what is that, about half a millimeter thick. So I'm just going to line that up. I can make that a little wider. You notice when I set down that spout, I don't set it down so that it hits the table. I want that seal to be really clean. If I was going to make this into a piece of neon and pull vacuum on it, this seal would have to be airtight. Okay, so that looks pretty good. You see it's a little smaller than what it will be in the end. I'm going to heat up all the edges, wicked hot, because we're in New England and that's what we say. So I'm getting all those edges hot. It will make your seal much easier. Seal it together. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit and blow. So there we don't have much to work out. Now you could work this out with a hand torch, but a lot of times I just use a big torch and I just kind of heat up an area, let it sink in a little bit, and then turn and blow. So I'm just working out that seal. I want it to, to look as if it's one piece of glass. The wall thickness will be the same. And I'm doing this out of clear and I think you should all do it out of clear before you do it out of color. Because with color, you wouldn't be able to see this wall. And to start out with, it's important to know that. So again, you could get out the hand torch and work out the seal, but um, a lot of times I'm in a hurry. I just do things without getting the hand torch out. And a little thickness there, we're gonna heat that up and try to work that in just a little bit more. Now I might bend that in a little bit more after we do the top, but I don't want that to interfere when we open up the top. So I'm gonna leave it where it is right now. And then maybe bend it a little bit more right there. 
Was, if I was in science, this seal would be fine. But since this is not a scientific piece, I want to work it out a little bit more so that the wall thickness looks a little bit better. When people photograph glass, it's the wall thickness that you'll see. So you want that wall thickness to be smooth. Just take your time. So we could work that out some more, but I think we should move on. And then I've created some stress in that area. So to relieve that stress, I heat up the whole area and work it out. You don't want to heat it up so much that things are moving, just under that. Okay, so now we'll try to put on this handle on the other side. So I'm going to put a little piece of um, solid where I want to attach it. And I want a really hot seal where I do that. If you notice, I'm holding the piece high in the plane, keeping it warm while I'm heating the piece of solid. I'm going to get, you could mark it with a Sharpie. Um, the Sharpie will disappear at some point, but you could mark it with a Sharpie if you want. Low in the right area. I want that to be really smooth. I don't want to see any line where I attach that. Just a little dot. Make sure that's kind of even. I think that's good. And then we'll attach this puppy. This has been cold for a while, so let's warm it up. It's sometimes good to have a few parts already made so that when you're putting things together, if one part breaks, then um, you can use another part. So we'll get these solid pieces very hot and then put it together. So I really want to work on that seal first before I get it in the correct position. And again, I'm just going to use the torch here. You can use your hand torch if you feel like it. Bring that to where I want it to be. Make sure that I have a nice smooth connection there. If you want to, you could even put a little piece of solid here on the bottom. Let's do that real quick. Just as another point of attachment. When if you do this, you're creating a lot of stress in the piece. And so you're going to have to really work on keeping it warm after you do this. Again, I'll get an area really hot, touch and pull slightly so that I have a very nice, smooth place to connect to. Keep everything warm. We'll take this off. Remember, we can't blow into this anymore, so we can't adjust the shape of the um, tubing. So I'm going to bring that close together just by heating that up with a nice soft flame. Don't get it too hot. Not exactly where I want to get it, but we'll work on that. It's good to mess up a little bit. <laughs> Once you attach the two solid pieces, you can let the glass flow. Let me see that little piece right here. You can let the glass flow to where you want it to go. So now I've created a lot of stress between those two areas. I'm going to come back up here 
work that out a little bit more. Let the glass fall. I just give it a little, little push there. Okay, so now I'm going to take off the spout. You could, you know, put like little decorations now on that handle if you wanted to. You know, you could do all kinds of stuff. It's in position. I should have opened this point first. Sorry. And just puff it out a little bit, get it thin. And then break it open. a little thickness on top there. Now we'll want to do a fire cut right here. So I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to pull it thin. And we'll open it up similar to what we've been doing. So I'm just gathering up onto this point and it has opened up. And since I did get that a little uneven, we'll trim it a little bit, just like you do in hot glass with the shears, but we'll do it with a, um, a solid line. So we'll thicken this area up. Whenever you do a fire cut, you do thin out the glass and you want to thicken it. with that. I'm going to just take off that little area. You can see I call them little bleeds right here. I also want to make sure that it's flat. We're going to be putting a lid on this so we want it so that when people slam the lid down on it, it doesn't Okay, so we're going to let that cool. We're going to come over here later and hold on to that and take off the bottom. So while that's cooling, we'll do a top. Again, if you are more comfortable putting that into a hot kiln and letting that sit for a while, you can do that. Okay, so for the lid, I want it to be... So these calipers, this is the inside diameter. That's my outside diameter. So I need to shrink this down a little bit. Or you could use a smaller tube. Ooh, that's a horrible point, but we'll go with it. So I'm just going to heat this up. Let it constrict down a little bit. All the things that I'm doing right now are scientific glass blowing um, techniques that I'm applying to a teacup. I'm going to push what we call a ring right in the middle. Just a little bit less. And I think what I'd like to do with this teapot is put a what we call a ring seal in the top of it so that we could hang, we could make a little glass thing later on to hang our, um, our tea in. So for a ring, I want kind of a smaller plane. I'm going to just Put this on the edge of the plane and push together gently. 
I make hollow rings, not solid rings, so they don't touch on the inside. The wall thickness is the same throughout. So that will kind of sit on top of our teapot. I'm going to use the V block here to bring in that bottom a little bit more. I can also suck in just slightly to get that nice sharp edge there. I want to make sure that I'm measuring this correctly. And that will fit inside. So I'm going to open up this side. And we'll just bring down this top. This point over here in my right hand is just a horrible point. We want to get rid of it anyway. Take off some of that excess glass. And we're just going to blow this round for now. And then I think, let's see what I have here. Just seeing if I have a smaller tube. I stopped rotating, you can see, a little bit too soon, and it's saying totally blow that out. Kind of looks like a mushroom. So I'm going to be using this size tube. I want to make an opening just a little bit bigger than that to see our ring seal. So again, we'll kind of heat this up, blow it in, and open it up. Just a little bit with um, that right back. That would be the size of our ring seal. We form that out. Set that down. So I save a lot of little scraps of glass, and so this is just a little scrap that we'll be using. I'm just going to attach a rod to it real quick here. We're going to push the ring, and hopefully it will be about the same size as the ring that we created just a little while ago. Uh, opening. So here I have it on the edge of the flame and I'm pushing, 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 pushing. I keep that ring hollow. I don't make it solid. Okay, I think that'll work. And then just to put a little decoration on there, I'll put a constriction. And for a constriction, I'm just holding it in the flame pushing together gently, the inside diameter will shrink down, the ID will shrink down, the OD will stay the same. So that's a constriction. Down here on the bottom, we're going to put a hook where we can hook a, a, a glass tea ball, another demo at some other time. Before I make that hook, I'm going to make another little hole so that I'll be able to blow into the piece while I'm working on that ring seal. So I'm going to heat a little area, touch, and pull. Take that off and then have to do it a couple of times. There we have a really little hole there that will give us the ability to blow into things. And we'll make kind of a longish hook. We want that really secure right there. I don't want to make this much bigger than the ring that we've made. I want to make it a little long so that it will be easy to attach a T-ball to it. And I want it fairly sturdy so that things don't fall apart. You could keep it open or you could close it. I think I'm just going to keep that open like that. And we can make a little glass chain that will go through there. So let's see what I'm going to do. Okay, so the holes are just a little bit big. 
Hold on. I'm going to seal this up. Something I sometimes forget. And we're going to keep the top here. It's been out of the plane for a bit, so just kind of warm it up a little. I'm going to shrink this down just ever so slightly. I'm going to do that by heating it up, taking the graphite paddle, and just placing that right on top. And there it sits really nicely, and that's what we want. Okay, we're going to shrink down our flame, heat this up, and let that seal together. We want to work this out so that it all becomes one. So again, you're going to get it really hot, let it flow together. So I'm showing you a lot of different techniques that have been used in the scientific glass boiling world for centuries. Um, there's nothing new here that I'm showing you. I can't tell you that I invented any of this, but it's all very cool. Now we'll shape the top of this a little bit rounder just by heating it up. A ring seal is really strong. To put a piece of um, glass in the center of that to make the hook, this would be the strongest way of doing that. So I'm just centering that up. We'll center up this, this little top a little bit more. And we'll make sure that that hook, you know, if it's a little off center, you can just let it stay on center. And then we're going to open up the other side. I kind of wish this tube over here was a little bit bigger, but like well, you know, maybe I'll press a little thing right here at the very top. So just another little ring. And then after that ring, we'll take that off. So that will be a little long. So before I do a fire cut on the bottom, let's warm this out. And we'll measure again. And we don't need much of a lip on the inside, especially sometimes I make little glass hinges so that you can open it up and close it. Um, another video at some other time. We just need a little bit of a lip there. So um, I'm already pulling. I'm going to keep pulling and make this thin and thinner and thinner. Eventually open. And this is a little too short for me to rotate. <laughs> Sorry. So we're just going to kind of go with it. So just like we did the top, we're going to um, use our graphite to pull that out. Use our graphite to thicken it up. So there's our lid. Do not, you really, you know, I know that you all want to try it right now, but this is really hot and this is cold. And if you do that, then you're going to break your piece. So don't do that. This should be cool enough just to hold on to as we take the bottom off. So we're just going to slowly take this off. Again, we have strain in the piece. So I call this kind of creeping up on it a little bit. Off. And when you go to flatten this, kind of turn it as you're flattening so that you can make sure that you get it even on the top. I'm flattening it on a piece of graphite. Here we have a little too hot. Okay, so this is probably cool enough to set in. So there we have the top. And then later we can make a, a chain with a, a little thing to drop in there. Let's do a, just a little something on the lathe. So this is a scientific glass blowing lathe. 
It is run by two chains and it has a bore where I can put glass through it. Um, I use a multi-stopper with a lathe swivel in it. Um, the glass has to be fire polished before I put the multi-stopper in so that it doesn't destroy the multi-stopper. I'm just going to put that in there. Um, before I start working, I want to make sure that the bed is clean. I'm going to just wipe it off with a paper towel. And if you need to use some oil, you can just put a little oil on that and wipe that clean. And you should do this, you know, depending on how dusty you are, you know, just till that becomes nice and clean. This is the headstock. This is the tailstock. The tailstock should roll easily. If you have a lot of gunk on, on here, right here on the rails, then it's not going to roll so easily. It will actually wear down the rails eventually until um, it's not even anymore. So it's very important that you keep that clean. So here on the tailstock side, I have a jig in there right now because I was doing some flasks. This flask is broken, but you can see how if I only held it by three areas, it would be very slick. But with this jig, I'm holding it in six different points, and it's really stable. So I'm just going to leave that in there for now for our demo. I usually use a little bit of cloth on the piece so to keep the heat from the glass going up into the metal. So we'll just put that in there. These are scroll chucks. There's all different types of chucks. There's all kinds of jigs you can make for your chucks. Um, this locks in the chuck. I'm going to turn on the lathe and then engage the lathe. And I don't get it tight enough. <laughs> Sometimes if you don't have these little pieces of cloth in the right place, it could loosen up on you. Now, sometimes, you know, your glass could be a little crooked. You could hit the top of it. You could also hold on to it and stop it, you know, to try to straighten it out. Your glass tubing, unfortunately, isn't perfectly straight. And a lot of times the lathe you're working with is also not perfectly straight. So it's good to be able to straighten your tube. So we're going to bring these two pieces of glass together. And on the lathe here, I'm using um, methane and oxygen. Gives me a little bit more power than I had on the bench. Another thing you could use is hydrogen and oxygen. If you do that, you want to be really careful that you don't have a leak. So I'm just going to bring this down by putting the paddle on top, angling that paddle, take the flame away, but keep that graphite there, and then slowly bring that up. Everything you do on the lathe is just really slow. It's kind of boring, actually. See how I'm just kind of gradually bringing that down to about this diameter. So I'm just using that piece of glass in the tailstock as a putty to create a shape over here. And a putty is just a handle. So I'll get them equally hot a little bit of a problem there. Um, it's a little crooked yet, so I'm going to heat it up down here and straighten that too. We're just holding the paddle there like that. Not perfect, but it will do. We'll bring these two together and fold slightly, and that seal. I'm not using any air at all right there. So I'm just going to make a couple of different shapes here. I'm using the blow holes. I can wrap this around my neck if I want. I can fit like this. When you use the blow holes, you've got to keep your mouth open. Otherwise, you'll have a sealed vessel, and the piece will expand as you're working. 
I'm going to bring the tailstock in a little bit to gather the glass. And then I'm going to blow gently. Gather the glass. So just like in woodwork or metalwork, um, you can shape the glass using tools. This is a graphite piece. I can heat up the glass, gently set that on top of the glass. I'm keeping my elbow close to my body. And then again, gently take that graphite off. If you pull the graphite off too soon, you know, you'll get a flat side. Let's do that one more time. So you can make a series of different kind of beveled edges. Well, there I pulled it off a little too quickly. Another thing you can do is you can put you know, have things going into other things. So we have this shape. I can heat up this edge right here and slowly bring in the tailstock and let that other piece go onto the inside. I got a little crooked there. I'm sorry. But you can see how you can go in and out, in and out. Well, that's really crooked. Sorry. So I think another thing I want to show you is a flare. I'm just going to heat this area up, gather it, blow, and I, I am a little off on everything, so I'm going to go in with a graphite and try to straighten it. And then I'm going to go in with a sharper flame and do a fire cut. And here, you, you might have to practice this a bit. You want a really sharp flame. You're going to have your hand on the tail stock. And see how I'm pulling out that tail stock. I travel with the tail stock, and it will thin out to a point where it will open up. After I do a fire cut, it's very important to keep this area here so that I don't have a thin, sharp edge. So here, if I want to do a flare, I'll keep the edge of that. I have some of the flame going on the inside, some on the outside, and I just flare it up. Take the flame away, take the graphite, and then you'll take a paddle. You could also even flare it back if you want to, just by heating it up, taking the gra graphite paddle and pushing it back a little bit. Sorry about everything being a little bit awesome, but you get the idea.